Mr. Chairman, thank you very much. And, and Speaker Oliver, thank you for, for your kindness. And, and Chairman uh, Wisniewski, congratulations on the tremendous uh, uh, victory that you had in this room for, for fairness and for balance in the redistricting plan that was so recently approved here in New Jersey. I had the honor to be able to chair the Democratic Governors Association this year. Uh, and they are 20 men and women from New York to California who are facing all of the same challenges that every state and the rest of our country is facing in terms of balancing budgets and moving forward at the same time. And there's a big difference between the way that most Democratic governors approach their job and the way that uh, uh, a new crop of Republican governors approach their job. I'm very proud of the people of our state. We are actually starting to create jobs again. Uh, we're driving unemployment down, and yet at the same time, we've been able to bring people together to do very, very difficult things. Uh, whether it's reforming our, our pension system or cutting $6.6 .6 billion in, in, in spending, uh, we believe that uh, you have to do both of those things at the same time, namely balance budgets, but also make progress. And the most important progress of all coming out of this recession is to create jobs, is to put your oars in the water and move your state forward. So it's an honor to be with all of you uh, uh, here in New Jersey. Uh, you are a great state, and, and I feel that kinship, and I'm looking forward to working with you in the days and months ahead. Governor Christie often sort of defend some of his actions by pointing to Governor Cuomo in New York, a member of your organization. Do you think that's a fair comparison when he says Governor Cuomo is doing the same thing? I think, uh, I think Chris Christie would like to compare himself to Andrew Cuomo, but, but I know Andrew Cuomo, and Chris Christie is no Andrew Cuomo. <laughs> the, the most difficult things are, are only able to be faced and, uh, and, and overcome when you bring people together. Uh, with honesty and with respect and and and, uh, and and with an ethic that says we're all in this together. And I think that's what uh, Democratic governors, not only Governor Cuomo, but across the United States are doing. Now, it doesn't make the headlines. It doesn't make, uh, you know, it doesn't get you the 1,500 YouTube hits with the uh, antique FDR haters and the government haters across the country, but it is the sort of way that you're able to forge a way forward, and especially in these very difficult and challenging times. Michael? Governor, uh, my memory tells me that Governor Christie uh, took a swipe at you within the past <coughs> month or six weeks, uh, a rhetorical swipe. Um, it must have been in response to something you had said about him. Can you refresh my memory a little bit? Are you familiar with what I'm talking about? I've kind of lost track of it. Um, I, I don't remember exactly what he's, what, I mean, what, what, I don't what one of those things you might remember, but I can't say this. You were spewing palindrome and that you were only talking about How do you spell palindrome? Oh, pablum. Pablum, sorry. Oh, pablum. Pablum, sorry. And that you were, you, were, you were only talking to get into the New York Times. So you were talking about it. Well, when I saw Governor Christie, I thanked him, in fact, for getting me above the fold in the New York Times. Uh, I find Governor Christie to be uh, uh, so different from the sorts of leaders that are governing, uh, that are governing states as, as Democratic governors. Um, and uh, the, uh, the, the contrast, I think, could not be plainer in so many ways. Uh, his divisive style, his bullying style, his divide-and-conquer style, uh, and uh, so he has, uh, he's made himself, if you will, a sort of foil for effective governing and bringing people together to, to face difficult challenges. Uh, all of us governing in these times have our, our work cut out for us. Um, but I think there's a real clear contrast between the this, this sort of uh, uh, the, the style that uh, the governor of New Jersey brings to the job and what uh, hard-working Democratic governors are doing across the country. I mean, this is, uh, uh, this is very serious, serious business. Uh, there are tremendous shortfalls in every state. Uh, there are moms and dads who have been looking for work for months and months and months. Uh, we should all be focused on getting people back to work, on reducing unemployment, and making our government work so that we can create more jobs and more opportunity now. You know, that we're all trying to do something more here than merely balance our budgets. 
that's important. It's critically important that you maintain fiscal responsibility uh, and, uh, and a balanced budget. And you know what? All across the country, there are governors that do that, men and women who have to do that every single year. Now, some of them do it better than others. Some of them do it while also investing in the competitive strengths that allow their states to create jobs ahead of other states and move out of this recession and get their people back to work. Others do it in a way that's divisive, that is not terribly productive, that makes them the darling of the uh, FDR-hating uh, uh, YouTube crowd, but really doesn't do a whole lot to move their state forward, in my opinion. Sir, yeah, how do you explain uh, that the governor, he's still, do, he's still above water in polling, he's still doing pretty well. How do you explain that there hasn't been the kind of backlash that we're seeing in Wisconsin against this governor? Can, can I take a, I follow all of these, and I think what you have in New Jersey is a, uh, our, our, is leadership, Democratic leadership in the House that is protecting the people of New Jersey from the excesses that you've seen in some other states where they do not have that sort of check or balance. I mean, that's, that's my read on this. But the governor has never said that he opposes collective bargaining in, in spirit or otherwise. So, what, what do you, is there a specific example where the legislature has stymied him? I'll, I'll, I'll just jump in there, and I, I think the speaker can too. Absolutely. Is that the governor? The governor has very carefully said no, he's not opposed to collective bargaining verbally. Of course, his actions speak differently, and that's the uh, you know that's the trademark of this governor. Is that while he will protest and say that he would like to be at the table bargaining vigorously as he was here in the Heldrich on behalf of the Republicans for the map, uh, the reality is, is that he'd rather have legislation that takes away those rights so that he doesn't have to bargain. So he's a Speaker. stealth Governor Walker, basically? Um, yes, as stealthy <laughs> as this governor Yes, and uh, sure. as much as Governor Christie likes to take control of everything, he is not demonstrating uh, the capability to, quote, put his money where his mouth is as it relates to that. And uh, he has made a determination, and he has told you in the press that he believes in collective bargaining, but he has not created the opportunity for organized labor in the state to sit at a bargaining table with him. One last question. Governor O'Malley, hearing criticism today from some Republicans that you left your state with only days left in the budget process um, for your own budget, would you like to respond to that? Sure. I was I was in my state today. I was on the phone on the way up here, and I will be in my state again uh, and, and at work uh, first thing tomorrow as well. Uh, there will be no need for me to catch a red eye tonight. Thank you all very much.